Good morning. I just morning. want to call you Jeanette. Um, Elizabeth. Yeah, Elizabeth. Jeanette was just here. Uh, good morning, Elizabeth. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the, the tribe's elderly history review, uh, bringing elders in. And to start with, I'm going to ask you if you would give us your full name, that means your middle name, and then spell it for us so that it's correct on the, uh, the videotape. Elizabeth May Bins. It was off. My maiden name was off. Elizabeth, E L I Z A B E T H. May is M A E. Last name Bins, B I N S. And could you give us your date of birth and where you were born? I was born in Wausau, Wisconsin, in 9532. 9532. Can I ask why it says Huff on the list here? Because that's my maiden name. Okay. Okay, and you said you were born in Wausau. Mm hmm All right. Um, I'd like to ask you about your grandparents, or first your parents, and then your grandparents. So could you give us the names of your mom and dad? My father was Comey Huff, and my mother was Ada Paulus. And then, how about the grandparents, like, say, on your mom's side? Did you, do you remember them? On my mom's side was uh, Dr. Josiah Paulus and Electa Skenador. And your dad's? My dad, I don't know who his father was, but his mother was, they called her Lisquit, which would have been uh, Elizabeth. And I don't know if she was a, and somebody said she was a hill before. She was a Huff. Okay. Have you checked your genealogy at all? With Not the on the Huff side, but I started on the uh, my mother's side. Okay. The lady you just spoke with would be a good person to talk to. Yes. Okay. Let's go to your mom's side, though. What do you remember about your your parents, and then we'll talk about your grandparents. What do I remember about my parents? Okay. My mother and dad were divorced when I was three years old. And we moved to, to Oneida, my mother and I and my brother moved to Oneida with my grandmother. Um, we lived next door to the Norbert Hill Center. Now, at that time, it was Garden Angel Boarding School. Right. And it had been a government school before that. Um, the diocese, the Catholic diocese, always wanted my grandmother's property. And I remember... Um, Going, they allowed me to go to school at the boarding school, just daytime. I didn't have to stay there, which I was the only one that was allowed to do that because they eventually wanted her property. And um, my mother worked for Schrader's Grocery Store. My Aunt Grace worked for um, Morgan's for a while. And then she worked at... Um, Um, the Northern Globe and Mitten, run by um, Fabres in Green Bay. Okay. They were on Main Street. Um, my mother worked for Schrader's a long, long time. I only met my father twice in my life. Um, once when I was about eight years old and once again when I was 12. And I also was the only one of the children that attended his funeral. According to the priest, my mother didn't have to go because they were divorced, but he figured that children should be present. But at that time, my brother was in service, so I went. Speaking of brothers and sisters, how many um, brothers and sisters do, do you have? It's I have with the oldest down to I have one brother, and that's Roy Huff. He lives in Greenfield outside of Milwaukee there. Okay. I think I've met him. I think he goes to a lot of the meetings in yes. Milwaukee. Yes. Oh. And they just uh, honored the World War II veterans at the powwow recently. So we got to spend the day together. So there are only the two of you. Yes. You moved from Wausau back to Oneida when, when you were about three. Yes. Okay. Now, when you went to the boarding school, the Catholic boarding school, were there a lot of Oneidas there? No. no. 
I was the only one. Um, I wished I had gone to the mission school, but I, but I didn't. So I didn't have many Oneida friends either. <laughs> Maybe that's why they don't know who I am to this day, unless I mention my brother's name. They all know my brother um, or my mother. But um, I had one Indian friend, close Indian friend. She was Stockbridge. Her mother worked at the boarding school at the time. They had a farm, and she and I palled around together. Otherwise, I chummed with um, Helen Coonan. Her mother and dad had Coonans in, um, in Oneida and Bruce Schrader. Those were kids I played with. Did your, did your mom and your grandma talk Oneida at all? They talked to Oneida only when they didn't want me to know what they were talking about, mm -hmm. and which was a shame because they, I never learned the language. Just a few words that you might not want to repeat. <laughs> so then, was your grandpa alive then with your grandma? When, when, no. No? No. Okay. And then on your father's side, you did you know them at all? No. no. I only met my grandmother half, uh, once when I was um, maybe about five or six years old, because I remember her, but um, that's the only contact I had with her. Okay. Uh, do you remember if you're, what your mom, did she can or sew a lot or? Um, my mother did a lot of sewing. My grandmother did a lot of um, gardening. She always had a garden on either side of the house. One side she grew all cucumbers, the other side was a variety of vegetables. And then um, the neighbor lady, which was um, Cassie Denny, um, they used to converse over the, over the fence once in a while. And if I did anything wrong, she always tattled on me. Because <laughs> <laughs> one time I fell off the shed roof and um, I didn't tell my mother and my grandmother about it. They were gone. And Cassie asked my grandmother the next day, she said, did Betty hurt herself when she fell off the rope? <laughs> so she used to tell on, what, tell on me if she saw me doing something. Okay. Well, um, where you live next door to the what we call the seminary now, mm -hmm. did you have electricity and running water? No. We had pumped water, and we had uh, coal delivered, and we had an outhouse, and my grandmother never had any of those indoor things. Uh, I noticed, um, I went into the house one time while Sonny was still living. I asked if I could come into the house and see what they had done with it. And they made my grandmother's room into a bathroom, and they had running water, and they had electricity. It was really, they fixed it up really nice. Yeah, okay. they fixed it up really nice. Um, yeah, I know where that, that house is. So, what did you do during the winter time? then? Did you go sliding on that hill back Um, We used to slide in the, there was a little hill in the back, in the back of our place there, and we, my brother made a, he made a, a sleigh, and I wasn't allowed to use it, but when he wasn't around, I used it. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, then you had snow banks, you know, that went up the telephone poles, yeah. and um, if the, if the um, road froze over from the rain in that, we used to hitch a hang on, put our ice skates on and hang on to the milk wagon. Rob Elmer used to pick up milk and stuff oh, and yeah. used to hang on to the back of his sleigh. Did you go swimming down in the creek then? Uh, no, I went swimming in the quarry, which we weren't supposed to do either. Um, you were adventuring some little girl, <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> um, we used to go pick beans. Um, Mr. Berto, you'd pick us up in the back of the truck. We'd go pick beans, and then before we went home, 
we would walk home, but first we would go to the swimming hole, which was close to where we were picking beans, and we'd go swimming. I learned to swim in the quarry all by myself. So, but we used to have fun. Did, uh, did you and any of your friends, our family, go cherry picking during the summer? I did. I used to go with, um, um, I can't remember her mother's name, but the girl I chummed with in high school, Zelda Matoxin, um, she and her mother, we went up to Sturgeon Bay. We were up there for a week cherry picking, and I went down the wrong side of the ladder. <laughs> I had fun, but I didn't get hurt. When you're young, I guess you don't get hurt so bad. You're not expecting. I wasn't expecting the steps weren't on that side. Were there a lot of Oneidas that went cherry picking when you went there? Uh, yes, they were, but I don't remember who they were. But there were a lot of, a lot of people from Oneida. Yeah, that was a fun, fun experience. Yeah, it was. Um, is your you your family with church affiliation, or are you affiliated uh, with one? I was a, we went to uh, Holy Apostles okay. here. So um, what were your Christmas and Easter, like the, the traditional fairs? My Christmas was, um, I had a nice childhood. I, um, I enjoyed um, a holiday Christmas. I never knew how Santa Claus came because um, we always went to midnight mass and Santa Claus had always been to the house when we got home and I never realized how he, how he got there. And what happened was when I grew up, when I found out how they did that, my grandmother and I would have to go to the car. They. My aunt would go out and warm up the car. Grandmother and I would go to the car, and my mother and, and my aunt would race around putting the stuff under the tree. <laughs> and then when we got home, we had, um, they'd have coffee, and they'd have Moke and David wine and those little fancy little glasses they were. And I could have a little sip of that, and we'd have cookies that grandmother made. Um, that was our Christmas. Easter? We all went to church. We went to sunrise service, and everybody got new shoes and a new dress and a hat and gloves and purse, and you were all decked out. And then uh, Fourth of July was always a fun time because um, we would have uh, relatives. I had a cousin, um, Elizabeth Smith well, was her married name. I believe she was a doc stater before that. Um, she lived, she was a nurse at Muirdale in Milwaukee, and um, her birthday was September 4th, mine was the 5th, so we always celebrated together, and 4th of July we'd do that, because then we'd have all relatives there, and we'd have a big picnic outside. There were a lot of shade trees around my grandma's house. We always had a good time, and um, my first, um, my first trip on the train was she invited me to Milwaukee to visit her for a week. And that was, I got off the train and she wasn't there to meet me and so they put me in the ticket office and she always wore a, a big uh, hat. And I was sitting there and I wouldn't talk to anybody and um, pretty soon I saw her standing looking at the schedule and the, the first words I said to anybody was, there she is, and <laughs> so then they paged her, so. How old we were you when you learned about your grandpa, Josiah? I was, um, oh, I was in um, grade school. I must have been seven, eight years old when I really inquired who the portrait was that my grandmother had in the home. And, um, my mother told me about him, and that's how I learned who he was. Yeah. Did she share any memories about him with you that you remember? Well, my mother, um, my mother kind of looks like him a lot in the, the 
kind of. I can see you in. Kind of favored. He kind of favored her a little bit, but um, other than that, I don't remember anything in particular. Okay, so you went to the the Catholic Diocese School, the grade school. Where did you go from there? I went to. We moved to Green Bay when I was in eighth grade, and I went to Washington Junior High School and East High School. Then I went on to, um, in 51, I went into a midterm class in Springfield, Illinois, in nurses' training. I didn't finish, but when I left in 54, my grandmother had died in 54, and right after that I didn't go back. But I worked at St. Vincent's. Um, my The nurse... My mentor was from, we worked at St. Vincent's, and um, Sister Quina was a little German nun that wanted me to go to school. That was her mother house in Springfield, Illinois. And so when I did come home, I was able to work as a nurse, but I didn't get paid as an RN, but I was able to work as a nurse. That was back when there wasn't such a strict law but with what you had to have degrees and all this. What was the requirement for RN at that time? A couple of years or was it four? Three. Three. Then when I I worked for ten years at St. Vinnie's but then they start getting their bachelor's degree and stuff. Yeah, I don't see any more nursing nuns. I think no, at least they don't dress like they used to. Well, yeah. If they, they are around there. Okay, so then, okay, you went to Milwaukee. You came back, or was that Chicago? Where was the? Where you went I to just went to visit in Milwaukee as a child. Okay, when you went to Springfield, that's Illinois. Yes. Okay, and you were there for a couple of years, and then you came back. I was there three years. When your grandma died. And my grandmother died, and then I did work out in New Jersey for a while, and then I came back to Green Bay. I only worked out there not quite a year. Your mom was still here? Oh, yeah. Okay. Then I worked, I worked 40 years all told, St. Vincent's doctor's office, and then I ended up at Oddfellows Home when my mother had to go there. I thought, well, I'll go and work there while she's there, but I ended up staying there even after she passed away. Were you ever married? I married in 58. I married a man from Green Bay. His name was Emery Bins. And your children? I have a daughter, Colleen. <clears throat> she's married to um, Robin John Sr., and I have a son, John Bins, who lives up in St. Germain. Colleen is well, he work, works up in St. Germain. But well, uh, the Colleen I know is like a, she's an arts teacher, right? Yeah, she was teaching at the Turtle School until this year. Okay. And now she's going to devote all her time to her shop in Egg Harbor. Right. Chief yeah. Oshkosh Native American Arts. Right. Yeah, what does John do? John does um, construction, um, master of all trades, and n not master of any, really, <laughs> but does a lot of things. Yeah. Um, do you have any ch uh, grandchildren? Well, no, not really. Um, kind of, uh, Colleen kind of adopted um, Stephanie Muscovitz, okay. and she has two children, which... Now, is Stephanie Dr. Fred's daughter? Yes. Okay. And she has um, a daughter, Acacia, and a little son, Freddie. And uh, they're kind of my grandchildren. Makes the world a better place. Mm -hmm. um, so what are you doing right now, then? Right now, I, um, <clears throat> I go to Arizona in the wintertime. I have a park model there, and... My husband and I have been going there about 15 years, and we have lots of friends down there that 
What did your husband do? He was an insurance agent for 36 years. He died of cancer last year in June. Um, I do uh, some sewing when I feel like it. <laughs> um, I make uh, certain tops some for some of the dancers and um, if they request them, I, I don't advertise that I do this, but those that know I do it, they'll come to me once in a while. Now, before we started taping, you and I were talking a little bit about um, your your grandfather, uh, Dr. Josiah Powell, mm -hmm. and the fact that they're going to be honoring him. They did, did already, know? yeah. Okay. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Well, the historian, uh, a Mr. Still, in um, at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, um, Fort Sam Houston is a medical center where the veterans that um, were the soldiers that have been in the Iraq war and um, are injured, they a lot of them come there. And um, he found, or he was looking up um, the doctors, and he found that Dr. Josiah Paulus was the first Native American doctor to be killed in the First World War. And the... Um, Native American club in San Antonio and Fort Sam Houston got together and dedicated a guest house um, to my grandfather. I can't remember the date now. I think it was, I think it was 04. Anyway, um, they invited us. He located, he located a family, but they said they weren't the ones, and so then he kept uh, fishing around for somebody and found my brother and I. We're the last ones of that particular Paulus family left, so we were invited in our family to the dedication. And... Um, they presented um, my brother, the Native American Club presented my brother with um, a blanket and he has a, a large portrait in the lobby and one on the outside and his name is on the house, the guest house and it was really quite an honor. Pretty nice. Um. When you were growing up, did your, your mom and your grandma ever talk about the New York land claims at all? No, they never mentioned that. Um, they really never, I didn't know anything about that till my daughter came home from, she went to school in Rochester, New York. And uh, she graduated from RIT with a master's degree in teaching and she was quite involved with the um, Oneidas in New York. And um, she was a lot into the custom, the heritage, and wanting to learn the language and different things and learned about the land claims and things. But I didn't know anything about that until you read about it and I heard about it from her. Did you, I know your brother does quite a bit, but did you ever participate in any of the tribal, like GTC meetings or? No, I go to the meetings and things when I'm, when I'm here, but um, I'm doing that right now with, um, I attend some of the meetings here and I try to do the elections. What is your observation on um, having you know, come and kind of come and going back, going away from one and coming to the reservation. You see a lot of changes. Yes, I see a lot of things going on that shouldn't be going on. Um, what people don't know have any idea who I am a lot of times. 
and I have no idea who they are either unless I'm introduced to them or I read about them. Um, like I say, when I went to school, I never chummed with anyone. I only rode the school bus, I think, once. And um, nobody, nobody was very nice to me anyway. It's like they think I'm better than they are because I didn't, I wasn't raised here. And that's not, not the case. I'm very proud of who I am. But most of my friends are all white. And that's what I find the people here are being brainwashed as far as government yeah. people. Um, and I'm afraid that applies more to like the turtle school, the school. Mm -hmm. I've heard those comments from, yes. the, from the kids. They weren't very nice to my daughter and that's why she left. They don't seem to know how to treat their own people when they return. They return because they want to be here and they're educated in what, you know, in different fields. But they get into that field and the person that's in charge doesn't know how to treat them. And eventually they just up and leave. Well, you and I will have to have a gap session because I, I hear you loud and clear. Uh, it's a trend that's been going on for quite some time. Um, but so you see those changes in terms of the people's behaviors, but how about physical structures? You notice some big changes there? Oh, I think it's wonderful the things that they've done since they've had the casino and things. They've got the medical center and they've done housing for the elderly and, you know, that. They, at least they've done some nice things for the for the people. Got a ways to go. Yeah. Um, just out of curiosity, did your mom or your your family ever have any ghost stories that they shared? Ghost stories? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love <laughs> ghost stories. I <laughs> call them ghost stories. Some people call them witch stories. When I worked at the uh, Ad Fellows Home, uh, I was there for. 20 years, um, one of the girls that worked with me at nighttime, I worked the night shift 11 to 7, and she was into ghost stories and used to tell us ghost stories all the time. Um, no, but I forget where the town is here in in, um, in Wisconsin where they have a ghost parade, and we always laugh because we said, we gotta, we got to make sure and hit that ghost parade. Oh, I, I need a Kleenex. Yeah, right up here. Okay. I have a question in terms of, because I've always been um, a fan, so to speak, of Dr. Paulus. Um, if you could see the Oneida people do something to recognize him, what would it be? <laughs> Just acknowledging the man would be wonderful, because it seems a lot of people don't know who he was or he did. Um, I heard comments made um, that he was a drinker. Well, that's not. A lot of us. I are. don't. A lot of people were, mm -hmm. and still are. Which I. Yeah. They don't want the Indians to drink, but things are being done that. Well, you know, I admire Dr. Hill. She's in, she's Mohawk. Oh she's yes, Mohawk. I loved her. But and then I thought, well. You know, we need to recognize, like you, I agree, we need to recognize Dr. Collins. Um, okay, now what was the other question here? Um, what's your observation on how do you feel about being an elder? I hurt all over. <laughs> <laughs> One of those tough questions. <laughs> um, I noticed um, um, you do get the respect as as an elder. Uh, they do uh, teach the children that much. I understand um, the younger people do have respect for the elders, which a lot of times you find in the white man's world they don't. But um, 
I um, really never gave it much thought. I just figured I'm growing old. That, that, that. Just enjoy it. Um, what about the you know the term sovereignty is thrown around quite a bit. What is your take on on uh, tribal? I sovereignty? don't think they know what it really is all about. I tend to agree with you. Um, okay, now, we usually ask the elders at the end of the interview if there was something they would like to share with future generations who will probably someday watch your video, see what you had to say, and if you can leave some parting comments about your philosophy or what you'd like to see or anything that you'd like to share. I would like the people to know and be proud of who they are and learn how to treat their people. Hopefully someday that'll happen. People come back with the, the idea they want to help their people, but the ones that are already here in, in the higher echelon don't don't know how to handle it. Too much nepotism going on. They don't know the job and they're hired for it anyway. So I don't think that's right. Now I'd like to ask the gentleman back here if I missed any questions. I don't think so. Yeah, I think most of it. Okay. I'd like to thank you very much for coming. Thank you.